And I have today a very interesting guest, a very interesting guest of Tom Armitage here from SiteSeeker. And um, Thomas is an, an upbeat, high energy and outspoken digital marketer. I'm going to put that to the test today. Um, he has a passion for telling stories and he puts his creativity into building the content um, that is optimized and attractive for the ever-changing web. And so we're going to be learning about how they're supporting teams to win more um, business through their digital um, um, assets, right? So he works full time at SightSeeker, um, which is a, a digital marketing agency in upstate New York. And um, he's also a professor at the Utica College. So there comes the academic and the practical perspective uh, all in one package. So Thomas, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Yeah, maybe just tell us uh, about SightSeeker a little bit. What is it all about in your own words? So SightSeeker is a digital agency where we consider ourselves full service digital. Um, we, we do a little bit in the traditional space, but for the most part, um, just digital marketing, digital advertising. And we have a really interesting background because we've been around for going on 18 years now, which in the grand scheme of things in, in the world, that's not that long in terms of a business being around, but in the digital marketing world, we're actually pretty seasoned um, with a lot, of, a lot of other digital companies kind of popping up throughout that time. So we've been around the block um, and we've done quite a bit over the course of that time. When SiteSeeker was first founded, it was really just based purely on search engine optimization because 2003 when we started, Google was in its infancy, right? Google came about in 98, but it took them several years to get off the ground. So our founders, Brian and Eddie Bluff, their brothers, they really began the business knowing that a lot of these industrial B2B clients were going to have to move away from these catalog based ways of being found by buyers and interested uh, prospects. And it was all shifting towards having a website and making sure that website was indexing properly, primarily through search engines and primarily through Google. So a lot of our early contracts, a lot of our early partners, it was really just SEO. And that was really all that we did. But of course, you know, 2003 was, was quite a while ago at this point. Over the course of that time, we've really expanded our offerings to be full service digital. And most of the, most of the work and most of the, the relationships that we have with clients um, you know, have a, a number of different uh, packages and, and tactics and strategies that we're offering to clients across the digital, um, across digital disciplines. A lot of Google advertising still, it still tends to be a very successful tactic, especially for B2B clients. Uh, we're doing a lot of social media marketing as just like uh, a lot of other companies out there. Email marketing, marketing automation, getting a lot more advanced on the email side, um, as well as a lot of uh, programmatic ad buying and other different types of, of trending and, and new age ways of placing ads and making sure that you're a lot more disciplined in, in where that's being placed to get the most bang for your buck. You mentioned B2B clients there. What would be the typical, a typical client or a typical you know, vertical that your clients would be operating in? So SightSeeker is based in upstate New York, where if you look at New York State and you put a dot right in the center, that's where SightSeeker is based. We're about 45 minutes from Syracuse, if people are familiar with Syracuse University, and about three hours from New York City, three and a half hours from New York City. So um, just because of where we're located in the Northeast, still being somewhat of a, a blue collar uh, type of uh, area, we work with a lot of manufacturers as well as um, we found... A, a sweet spot in the niche of material handling clients. So we were a member of Mahita and the material uh, handling trade organization. And we've dealt with a lot of forklift uh, distributors as well as other material handling clients. So, um, you know, we probably have a, a balance between, I'd say maybe 70% B2B versus 30% B2C, but in that 70%, it's usually made up of manufacturers and, and material handling clients for, for the most part. For everybody who's listening in, when you say material handling, it's like forklifts and those type of things, like elements that you would be using for material handling materials. So, do you have one or two more examples for this? Uh, there's also like automation, um, racking systems, and other types of uh, robotic type of uh, devices and machinery inside of a warehouse, inside of a manufacturing facility to help transport uh, those materials. Gotcha. Um, and we'll be looking at those sort of, you know, more traditional companies, manufacturers and material handling companies. What would be a typical, you know, client acquisition channel? How do they hear about SiteSeeker and how they get started? A lot of it's referral. We do a lot of speaking. We do, you know, things just like we're doing right now where we, we take the opportunity if there's, there's webinars, uh, podcasts, interviews, creating content, uh, leveraging our social media networks um, and inside of our, our local area doing networking events. Uh, prior to COVID, we could get face-to-face -face, um, with a lot of folks that way, but a, a lot of referrals is, is how we get a lot of our business. 
Jeez. and the, the relationships in the, inside of those trade organizations as well. It's very, it's very interesting because you're working in the sort of more traditional area. Did you see sort of the mindset, the digital mindset of those maybe business owners or marketeers within those manufacturers change uh, recently? Are they focusing much more to get the digital journeys right? Like, w where do you see them currently um, in their, yeah, in their mindset towards you know conversions on their website and winning clients through online? It's a really good question because I think the the popular um, thought out there is that. And it's accurate for the most part that it takes B2B longer to keep up with the trends or, or get with the trends as opposed to B2C. B2C is usually the trendsetters. So when there's new technology that's out there, new platforms, new ways of, of engaging with an audience, usually B2C are the ones doing it first after it's kind of tested, the kinks have been worked out. It's been proven that the sites or the networks or, or the software is popular enough, then B2B kind of grabs a hold. And, and puts um, their dollars and their, their effort behind it. And I, I think that's still true for the most part. So um, because we've been working in B2B uh, a little bit longer, or at least focusing on more to B2B, they are a, a little bit slower to adopt, but um, that doesn't mean to say that they're still you know, doing traditional advertising and running billboards and terrestrial radio. I, I think we've gotten to a point where they've uh, abandoned some of those very old school um, tactics. And not to say that those should be totally outruled, but the, the drawback is that it's hard to track those, right? Which ends up being hard to track the ROI against those, which is why we usually advocate against some of those traditional techniques. So as far as where they like to play now, still seeing a lot of success in digital ads, uh, still a lot of success in Google ads, experimenting a lot with Google display network, YouTube ads. And that was a little, that took them a little bit uh, longer to feel comfortable with video and video marketing. Uh, but I think we've gotten a, a lot of the, our partners to that point where they are comfortable doing that um, and making sure that the, the placement of those ads are not just in Google search, but you know, across the entire Google network and across the internet, across a lot of, of those different platforms. And, and we really, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to add to, we, we've helped them mature from just basic traditional email marketing to marketing automation where we can get a lot more intelligent with, who those emails are going out to, when those emails are going out to, and, and planning, you know, making sure that we're hitting those emails at the right stage within that buying cycle. Very interesting. Um, who would you say within those, you know, for example, manufacturing companies or material handling companies, who would be the champion, right, that brings SiteSeeker on board? Like, is that a business owner? Is that a, a marketeer that, you know, wants some digital power um, support? Like, who would be the champion? Yeah, it, it depends on the size of the organization, right? We, we've gone through the buyer personas, and we've built buyer personas for our, ourselves, for our own company. And usually you know, we do have business owners and marketing managers or marketing directors as two of our most important personas. And it really depends on the size. If it's a smaller organization, a smaller manufacturing facility um, or operations, then it would be the business owner directly that we're working with. And he'll be a lot more hands-on with the marketing as well as the outreach and building connections, building partnerships. If it's a larger scale operation, they'll certainly be uh, a CMO or a, or a director of marketing or a marketing manager that we'll, we'll make contact with and that's who we'll build a relationship with. I see. What role would you say does the site seeker website play uh, sort of in the whole setup for client acquisition? That's actually a really good question because for, for a long time, especially when SEO was kind of the end all be all of, of finding new leads and finding prospects, I think we put a lot of effort into building out the site seeker website and trying to leverage it um, in terms of helping it find or helping prospects find us rather and i think over time what's happened is there's a lot more tactics that have been beneficial to us into providing prospects and and bringing them to us um which i had noted a few minutes ago with which is building those relationships with the trade organizations doing outreach content marketing social media marketing um email marketing and i think that the site seeker website is now more of a resource after the awareness process. It's really during that consideration phase. And that's probably not just Site Seekers website, that's probably a lot of companies out there where the exposure, the visibility, the, the branding has already taken place because there's so many, there's just a variety of ways that you can become exposed to a brand that the website now becomes a conversion engine rather than just a means to help draw people in. Super interesting observation. Yeah. I think it's an all, a very distinction that I think a lot of people wouldn't even wouldn't have drawn. Very interesting. What would you say right now is the major strength of the website? Is it the ability to convert to be that conversion engine? Is it the quality of the leads that it's producing, or is it you know the experience that you provide? Where do you see the major strength? Yeah, I see it as being an extension of the sales team, right? Having it be a, 
having it be a very clear and easy way for people to read about us, find sales material, find case studies, look at our clients list, look at the about information of the team players like my bio and the other members of the team and being able to help in that consideration and ultimately that decision-making process before they decide if they'd, they'd like to work with us. And that's, I think that same parallel can be applied to, you know, companies and in, in other industries and other fields as well. Makes sense. Is there anything where you see there's room for improvement? Let's say maybe on the you know, side of conversion rate or the, the lead qualification. Like where do you see room for improvement on the website? I, I think that this is a struggle, you know, internally at SiteSeeker, but also a struggle for the clients that we work with, the, the people across our social media sites when we're, you know, preaching kind of this, these philosophies. I think that content and content marketing is still one of, if not the, the most important thing to help draw visitors in, but also influence them and help convert them. And the, the, the struggle is that it takes a lot of time to develop content and develop really good content. And that's kind of everyone's stuck in between a rock and a hard place because they know how valuable content marketing is because you need content in order to have something to share on social, to have something to share on email, to have something to share on your website. So everybody understands and I think uh, agrees to the benefit of content, content marketing. The struggle is just having the time and the resources in order to get that done. But I think that that is the, the biggest area of opportunity for, for me, for ourselves and for our partners and prospects is, is content, content marketing and having the time uh, to do it and to do it really well in, in the right way. Very good. Now coming back to your services, right? For everybody who's listening in, what would you say is sort of the main competitive, competitive advantage, you know, that somebody would be benefit from when they work with SightSeeker? Because of our, our history and our, our ties to SEO and our foundation around technical things and technical marketing, I think the, the one main area of, our, of what makes us different from other agencies is our attention to detail around analytics and reporting. So a lot of our competitor agencies, not just locally in upstate New York, but even you know, throughout the Northeast, a lot of them are, are very creative. They're very good when it comes to creative, which I have a, a deep appreciation for. But I think a lot of people get lost in, in their way in, in outweighing creative and visuals over the technical side of marketing and, and deep, rich analysis and being able to make decisions around what the data is telling you. A-B testing, market research, looking at the numbers, looking at the trends, and giving more dollars to the ads or the, the tactics that are performing better from a number standpoint, not just what looks better, right? And I think that that's what has helped SightSeekers stand out over the years is tying all of our efforts to our dashboards and our analytics and, and drawing decisions around that data and not just subject, subjective creative work. Interesting. If we would be looking behind the curtain, right, for SightSeeker, like how are the sales and the marketing team structured at the moment? So... COVID definitely, you know, affected a lot of our clients and has affected the, the workplace and the marketplace um, as a whole. We, we think that things are, are turning around, bouncing back as we come to a close in 2020 and things are looking really promising for 2021 with our partners and, and our outreach efforts among prospects. So I think that this is a really critical time right now, November, December here, as people are deciding what their budgets are going to be looking like in 2021. And hopefully we get some positive news as it relates to the pandemic. Unfortunately, New York State just kind of closed everything after 10 p.m. a couple of days ago. So that makes us a little nervous again. But hopefully we'll have some positive news in the coming weeks and Q1 2021 will, will look promising. And that'll help, I think, our, our sales activity coming to a close this year and the first part of, of 2021 so that we can secure some new deals and renew some of our current deals and our current partnerships. And we'll be able to be really confident in the strategies that we put together for 2021, as long as things kind of <laughs> uh, seem healthy from a, a pandemic standpoint. I see. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. And just if somebody, you know, is interested um, in, in SightSeeker, obviously they can head over uh, to, to the website. Just could you give a, as an idea, you know, what needs somebody to be expecting? Are you working sort of, what is the typical uh, model you would work with a company and, you know, maybe the pricing associated, like how, maybe you could give us an idea. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, our website is siteseeker.com, site-seeker.com, and we provide a, a variety of, of digital marketing uh, support and help. 
And from a pricing standpoint, we have small business packages. They can really begin at, at seven, ten thousand um, dollars from a, a small, you know, themed WordPress website build with some, you know, basic ongoing marketing support, and they, you know, have, have run up to partnerships that are in the two hundred, three hundred thousand uh, dollar mark if if it's has a lot of different strategies and, and program level support um, that's associated with it. So it really runs the gamut. Um, we don't necessarily have a, a sweet spot in terms of what we're looking people to spend with us as long as you know we're, we're giving the support that they need and the help that they need and we're helping them accomplish their business goals. Um, but I think if you had to put me on the spot and ask me what, what an ideal program would look like for a, a, a small to medium sized business, probably thirty to forty thousand dollars a year, um, as long as that website is is in good shape and we can you know put some resources behind it to help with SEO conversion optimization, um, we can be you know building landing pages and, and helping provide um, a lot of direction and ultimately more conversions and leads uh, depending on what the the best outreach tactics are that we decide upon. Very good. I would like to switch gears a little bit and talk about you as a leader, a little bit as a marketing leader in the company. So what type of content do you consume? How do you educate yourself? I've been a, a really big advocate of LinkedIn over the past year or two. I've, I've been present on LinkedIn for probably, gosh, when I graduated undergrad, so 2009. I'm going over 10 years that I've been act or you know present on LinkedIn, but I've been doing a lot of following. I think that's how you and I have been connected on LinkedIn as well. And the amount of content, the amount of good content that exists inside of LinkedIn today is so far superior than what it, what it used to be, even, even up until you know, two, three years ago. I mean, it's just at a whole new level right now because I think that there's been a couple things that have changed over the years. I think that people want good information, good material, but they want to digest it faster. And I think LinkedIn has allowed for that, right? People are, you know, tend less to, you know, click on an article, go off site and, and read a deep um, long form article outside of those social media platforms. And LinkedIn has really favored and has given people the ability to be short, concise with still rich information, yeah. the ability that they've added for, for short videos. And I think that people are, and the slides as well, the slide decks that you can, you know, embed into your, your post. I think that it, it's a really good way to, if you make it a habit, like every, every Monday, you know, read through or create content every, every morning or every afternoon, if you get into a, a consistent pace of, of both engaging, interacting and creating content, you can use LinkedIn as probably the number one resource to stay up with the trends, to stay sharp in your, um, in your industry inside of your field. And, and that's the, the best way to, to do that. Obviously reading, you know, listening to podcasts, watching you know, longer form videos or reading long form art articles can help too. But if you're in a time crunch and you, you know, don't have as much time, then, then certainly just browsing your LinkedIn feed and interacting on a daily basis can really help you out tremendously. Very good. Um, since we're slowly coming to the end of the interview, I would like to jump into the rapid fire questions. There's a couple of short uh, questions with some crisp answers. Are you ready for those? Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. What's the last book you read? The last book that I read was, let me think, The Art of Possibility. I can't remember the names of the uh, authors. It was a husband and wife uh, duo, but it was very eye-opening on, on how you kind of view life and kind of where you're going in life. Our, we work with a career coach um, at SightSeeker, and she helps us with professional development, and that came as a recommendation from her. Awesome. Um, what is the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? I think that right now the biggest area of focus has been on conversion optimization. Well, I'm trying to, I know these are rapid fire questions, but I, I like to elaborate on <laughs> things. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, SEO has been kind of thrown around so uh, haphazardly over the past, you know, 15 years or so that we need to put, we as, you know, marketers need to put more emphasis on conversions in, in the UX and the UI and what that experience is like on the site rather than just doing anything and everything you can to try and get more people there, focusing on quality over quantity, essentially. Very good. What's the last thing that kept you awake at night? The last thing that kept me awake at night. Um, we've made some changes recently that the pandemic, 
pandemic has caused some changes in the company and we're looking to uh, outsource uh, photo and video. So I'm, I'm trying to stay really close to this to make sure that we are bringing on freelance partners that are, you know, the, the best quality people that we can find. So that way, you know, when, when video and photo projects come up, we don't have to, you know, sacrifice quality with having to go to outsource vendors or outsource partners for that. Okay. And the very last question, if today would be your very first day, uh, with SiteSeeker, what would be one advice that you would give yourself? I would say to be really great with time management because we work with a lot of clients and a lot of different clients. Um, you can definitely get, and this doesn't just apply to agency life. Um, this is, I guess, good life advice. Um, being able to respect your schedule, say no to people if, if you're overburdened or overtaxed and making sure that you keep your stress levels down as much as possible. Very cool. Tom, I really appreciate that you've been part of uh, Pathman Presents today. I want to give you the last word, right? If somebody forgets everything that we spoke about SiteSeeker in this interview today, what would be one thing that they should remember about the company? I think that my advice in digital marketing today, the best advice I can give is don't put all of your eggs, eggs in one basket. The world that we live in and the ways that our target audiences engage with our content with our brands it's it's happening in a very um dispersed way so you're better off selecting you know five or six different platforms five or six different tactics and taking time to apply those resources properly be active produce good quality content engage properly across those channels but you'll rarely find success just putting all of your eggs into one tactic today it just it can't it can't work anymore like that very good thanks for being part of the show Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.